Feels good to be back. Uh, I'm sure it probably hasn't escaped your notice that at the time of this recording, we're in an incredibly lonely situation with the outbreak of COVID-19 forcing people around the world into lockdown and isolation. In fact, the only reason I'm back in the studio is because apart from our lovely front row house man, Thanos, there's no one else here. This for tabletop RPG players has been somewhat of a bum deal with most of us being shoved into Roll20 and Tabletop Simulator trying to recreate the fun that we've had with our groups in person on a digital equivalent. Sometimes the blue light of our monitors doesn't quite live up to the warmth that we associate with role playing though. The kinetic satisfaction of rolling a die or writing on paper or drawing cards, the sharing of experiences with real humans whose emotions you can see and empathize with. Until we're allowed to get back to said groups, we might not be able to feel those connections again. And even if you can get groups to play online, the digital equivalent might just seem lacking or too impersonal for you. But do not despair, because when extroversion is at an all-time low, the space is cleared and prepped for introspection. You might be completely unaware of the deeply fascinating and intoxicating and innovative space that is the one-player RPG. In truth, I didn't really have any experience in them myself before researching for this video, but in actual fact, one-player RPGs can be just as creative and rewarding, if not more so, than their group counterparts. Turns out making persuasion rolls and stabbing things with swords isn't the only way to play a character in a story. So with that in mind, here's five amazing tabletop RPGs that you can play all on your lonesome. Everyone adores a villain, the charismatic rogue, the silver-tongued devil that thwarts the attempts of our heroes. It's often in the shoes of the villain that we learn the most about ourselves and our flaws. And Gentleman Bandit by Alison Arf invites you to not just inhabit that space, but to write poetry about it. The Gentleman Bandit is a social pariah. In the words of the rulebook, they call you a monster, a villain, a dealer of death. They call you all manner of unsavory, the most feeble epithets from shriveled minds. They call you devil. But they don't know you though. Sure, you're a murderer, but you have a poet's heart. The newspapers will begin to learn of your exploits though as they begin to discover the works you leave with the bodies of your victims. An unfortunate duelist, someone that tried to cheat you on a job, or a ruffian who should have taken your threats more seriously, will be discovered laid to rest with a 13 line poem. You're a man of elocution, one of the old guard of bandits that could wax lyrical in beautiful prose as well as they can empty a revolver. As the player, you'll be drawing cards from a standard deck of playing cards and using the values printed on them to prompt each line of your poem. If you've already written before, then the poker hands you've formed with your previous draw will set up a position for the poem you're writing this session. Draw a royal flush and you're at the top of your game, untouchable. But if your hands start to fail you, if you draw something more lowly, like a straight, you might find yourself unable to sleep, haunting the midnight highway for some intangible absence inside of you. For each suit in the deck that you could draw, there is a different motif that the line of poem you're writing will concern itself with. Spades will draw on the subject of loss, where clubs will be more focused on fear. The matter of the line, though, is determined by the card's value. An eight might ask you where you're going, a queen asking what brought you to this fate. With these tools, you'll expand on the myth of the gentleman bandit, building on the brief but flavorful description at the start of the book. Your narrative will unfold over time, and you might even see the bandit brought to justice should you deem it appropriate. It's difficult to describe just how much fun you can have with some writing prompts and some rough guidelines, so instead, let me read you the first poem I constructed in my game in the dulcet tones of Persajan Virtue. To lose a lover cuts the skin, but the loss of one's own charge hits bone. I fled that place like bat from hell, horses' hooves rung out on stone. And yet the sound of his bile leaving throat broke like porcelain twixt my ears. I dream of that clear cold night where an open plain familiar might wipe my tears. I wonder now what empty platitudes I might have whispered to still his heart. But honest foresight of tribulations still to come might tease that this be just a start. 
Perhaps love, sweet succor, might one day ease the grip of these callous hands. But in the depths of my soul, I see the need to lose my grip on long laid plans. It is the search of freedom then that reveals my shame, a fixation for violence without agency. There was a time now long past where I sacrificed my ambiguity. Now a directionless crevice finds itself inside my chest. The boy I once killed for, now himself laid to rest. And all for the love of his gentleman bandit. There's something magical about creating your own little world. It's part of human nature to construct myths and imagine an existence outside of our own where life is a little different a little more magical, more interesting, more enticing. It's no wonder that most game masters like to found their own little townships in pre-existing settings, fill it with their own NPCs and buildings and landmarks and imagine its history and culture and quirks. Some will go the extra mile and construct entire worlds for their players to inhabit, but there's still something intangibly personal about building a city. Ex Novo by Martin Nurekarand, Constantinus Dimopoulos, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce names, is a city building and map drawing game that can be played solo or in groups in which you'll go through a long list of commands which, by the end of your session, will form a rich and diverse history of a city of your own creation. You'll map out terrain, districts and landmarks of your city on a large piece of paper in the centre of the table as complementary index cards show the timeline of events in your city and the major factions that exist in its walls. From the get-go, your city is completely customizable, allowing you to set how old it will be by the end and the size of its population, tracked by tokens that move between districts and factions. The main chunk of play sees you rolling a number of six-sided dice and determining the results on a table, which instructs you to add or subtract from the map you've already made. At the start, you'll determine the landscape that you're surrounded by and the reason that your people settled here. You'll figure out the key players and plot buildings and their names. You'll find what resources flow into the city that drive its trade and industry. Once the initial stage is set, you'll pick up all three of your six-sided dice and roll on the event table. The amount of events your city will go through is dependent on the age of the city that you picked at the start, and that will determine how many rounds of play you'll be going through before you finish up. But you can always extend your playtime if you decide the city's story is not yet finished. The events can take you through natural disasters, important discoveries, times of war, internal struggles of power, and far, far more. The table is pretty massive, with a result for every combination you can roll, with 3d6, from 111 to the number of the beast. With each result, you'll be adding new districts and landmarks, destroying things that once stood tall, or changing them into something entirely new. Your citizens will shift loyalties, new factions might arise and fall, and the population will grow as the city does. Each of these results also comes with prompts that poke you to further the story. One result might proclaim that the city goes underground with new subterranean expansions. Sewers, deep wells, cheap new living space, what are they digging for? That is a question that's left to you. Ex Novo is a great little story game to play outright, and by the end of my first playthrough, I'd become quite attached to my people, wanting to spread out their expansions and continue my playthrough. But the great joy of creating something like this is that your creation doesn't have to end here. You can live in this world now that it's been created. Grab another rule set to play as town folk inside its streets or adventurers who have arrived to make a name for themselves in the fabled land that you've dreamt up. The Machine is a game that you play alone and with other people. Adira and Fenn Slattery's RPG plays like a dark, twisted version of Pass the Parcel played in reverse, as you and your friends take turns to add new layers to a story with no real happy endings in sight. Like many RPGs, you create a character, here by picking two or three words from a list of evocative descriptions. You might end up with a manic, penniless magician, a weary musician, or a brave, vulgar rat catcher. Your unfortunate soul has been cursed, unable to stop thinking about the machine, a mysterious contraption that haunts your waking mind. You must build it, even if it leads to your own destruction. 
your efforts to construct the instrument of your doom are recorded in a diary-like journal. The machine is a game played over days, weeks, and even months of real time. Each time you go to add an entry to your character's records, you once again draw a card from a standard deck of playing cards and see the emotions and events that you must describe. There may be a sudden breakthrough in your endless attempts to bring the machine to life that surprises you, or you may find yourself slipping into anger and guilt as things stall, secrets arise, and you find yourself unable to escape its pernicious draw. After drawing three face or ace cards, your inevitable doom takes place. Your character is left unable to complete their infernal task. The journal passes on to another who finds themselves afflicted by the curse as well. In real life terms, this means passing on your journal to the next player who creates a character from the unused traits left over from the ones that you've already selected. Their character is able to read the knowledge of their predecessors and continues to work on the machine, not knowing that they are just as doomed to eventual failure. The machine tells an intense shared story of obsession and downfall in pursuit of an impossible task. The bleak outcomes for its characters means that it's not a game that will suit everyone and requires some careful and sensitive handling of its more difficult themes. But if your group is prepared to tell a dark tale together, it presents a brilliantly powerful canvas for you to each add a layer to with every new entry. Despite the isolated nature of many of its characters and the fact that you play alone, passing on the diary also means that the machine feels less solitary than some of the other solo RPGs on this list. Reading through your complicated journal and the completed stories as a group once the game is finished weaves together your individual experiences into a moving and collective one. The rulebook even commands you to burn, tear apart, bury, or otherwise destroy the journal once you're finished, leaving you with nothing but the memories of your game, but what memories they will be. Also, you can just keep it because it's, it's going to be really cool. <laughs> Alone Among the Stars is a simple one-player game by designer Takuma Okada about creating planets and exploring them as a lone adventurer. In some ways, it's like a beautifully simple tabletop system for procedurally generating worlds, in the same way as popular video games such as Minecraft or Terraria or No Man's Sky. All you need is a single six-sided die, a pack of normal playing cards, and a journal or piece of paper to write on. You roll the d6 to determine how many cards you draw from the deck, placing them face down on the table. And then these are the locations on your planet. Wow, turns out creating an entire world isn't too big an ask. It might not seem much yet, but this is where the magic happens. Before you turn over a card, you roll the die again to see how you discover each location. Your adventurer might stumble across something suddenly, or undergo an arduous journey, or just chance upon it while taking a breather. Then the card is flipped. This creates a location on your planet with the card's suit and value relating to a table of potential details like in the previous games. You could embark on a trek to a canyon full of plants, discover ruins on a glacier, or encounter living beings while resting under the light of the moon. The game's simple descriptions do plenty to spark your imagination and allow you to colour in the gaps as you like, without being too vague or generic. That's key because you record your traveller's experiences of each place, what it was like, what you did, and how it made you feel. In your log, you might spend one day swimming in the hot springs of a deep underground temple, find a crashed spaceship in a towering treetop, or experience all manner of natural phenomena on the edge of a bubbling volcano. When you reach the end of the line of cards, you name your planet, along with a number if you want. Jetting off to a new world and discovering more corners of your personal universe is as simple as rolling the die again and drawing more cards. You could spend a week exploring one planet each day, or visit several in the space of a few hours. Maybe you and your friends could take it in turn to describe one planet each, gradually forming a shared universe from your collective imaginations. The rules for Alone Among the Stars are just three pages long, but it's a game with limitless potential, letting your mind spill forth with just as little encouragement and inspiration. As well as being a calm and creative exercise in its own right, it doubles as a fast and effective way of coming up with places for your next adventure in another role-playing game or other stories, just like with Ex Novo, but on a more personal level. Alone Among the Stars 
clever world making has inspired other games, including Samuel Mui's Alone With Your Ghost, where places and journeys across the galaxy are swapped for memories and emotions inside your mind as you exercise a demon that haunts you. And if you're looking to create and explore a whole universe with a friend by your side, there's also the two player together among the stars. Letters, remember those? You know, bits of paper with words on, ideally handwritten with beautiful cursive loops or animated chicken scratch scrawled beyond the margins. Maybe some little doodles too. Call us old fashioned, but a tweet with every other word, a hashtag or an email signed with sent from my iPhone or just a GIF doesn't do it the same way. Luckily Quill is the perfect excuse to revisit the days of yore in which pencils weren't a hundred pounds, sticks of plastic and ink didn't need an E attached at the start to make it relevant. Quill is a solo RPG by designer Scott Malthouse about writing letters to impress people in a lightly medieval fantasy world. You are one of several character classes, not a fighter, rogue or wizard, but a monk, knight, poet, aristocrat or someone else with a knack for brain over brawn. Your traits aren't how good you are at chopping goblins into mincemeat with a sword or pickpocketing unsuspecting guards, but the visual appeal of your handwriting, your eloquence and vocabulary, and your ability to write from the heart to spark emotion and persuade. Each of the game's scenarios tasks you with writing a letter to someone specific. You might be inquiring about buying a painting, but want to sensitively question whether it's the real deal, or expressing your grief at the sudden passing of a childhood friend. Here's the challenge. You have just five paragraphs to pen a moving and persuasive missive. Happily, you don't need to be a genius writer to succeed in Quill. While you're able to write as much as you like for each paragraph, the game features a robust scoring system to determine how well your words are received. Each paragraph must include a word or phrase from a list specific to that scenario. You roll up to three six-sided dice to see if you're able to summon the right words in the moment and choose whether to risk another roll for the flourish of an extra adverb or adjective. Succeed and you'll collect points that count towards your final score. Fail and you'll have to settle for a less impressive alternative, risking your letter struggling to convey your feelings accurately. Sure, you could just roll for each keyword and ignore the option to dress them up with your own creativity, but half of the fun of Quill is getting into the mindset of a concerned courtier or slightly stuffy scholar, each with their own specialties on the page. The scenarios introduce extra rules and a variety of different pen pals as you go, throwing up different requirements and consequences depending on the strength of your letter. Quill cleverly balances the open creativity of writing a letter with the guidance and framework of its dice-based gameplay and objectives. It's excellent fun, and once you're done with the scenarios in the original game, there are expansions inspired by writing love letters, finding out how D&D stock fantasy classes would fare by swapping their swords for pens, and even a mini campaign about writing letters in the midst of a Lovecraftian cosmic horror nightmare. Who knows, maybe it'll even convince you to swap that keyboard for calligraphy in real life. I think the main thing to take away from this, if anything, is that there is a lot of creativity out there, especially in spaces that you wouldn't expect it, and I would absolutely encourage you to head on over to itch.io. There will be links in the description to all of these games if you want to play them for yourself. Uh, but there's also just an incredible community that is building over there where so much creativity is just exploding in different little communities and people are bouncing off each other's ideas. I was blown away by how much I enjoyed some of these and I've never been a huge solo board gaming fan. So solo RPGs always seemed like a strange concept to me, but now I'm completely sold and have downloaded more RPGs than I can handle. Um, a lot of these games, if you're watching this at the time it was recorded and released, are on a massive bundle uh, on itch.io, which we'll also link to below, which is all about racial equality and justice for those harmed during the Black Lives Matter movement at the moment, with things like bail funds and the NAACP being the main benefactor of this charity bundle. There is over a thousand titles now, I think, with so many incredible things in there. Blades in the Dark is in that list. Lancer, which is one that uh, Matt Jarvis is always talking about how much he wants to play, where your mech pilots 
There's loads of incredible video games like um, A Short Hike and Night in the Woods, um, as well as like some of the more big book RPGs like Troika and some of the weirder little indie ones that I've been talking about today. I very, very much recommend hitting the link in the description and giving what you can. All of the money goes towards the charities that I mentioned earlier and there'll be more details on the page that will express themselves more eloquently than I can in the end of this video. But thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed some of these RPGs. If you've got any recommendations that you really want to tell people about yourself, head on down to the comment section and let's, let's see what other solo RPGs you like the look of that we can talk about as well. Um, and more importantly, please subscribe to this video because you know, this is the channel, so it would be really nice if you came and joined us. <laughs> Click on the bell icon and you'll be notified every time a video goes live. Uh, we stream every Thursday and you can also head over to dicebreaker.com, which is our home, um, where we have all kinds of written articles and lists and guides for things like how to play D&D and all those kind of things. So if you're a big RPG fan, it's a great place to be. Thanks very much for watching this video. I had a great time making it. I hope you enjoyed my poem uh, and have a lovely day. <laughs>